This is a flower farm on the south shore of Lake Naivasha. It's one of scores of plantations and they pick the flowers here and the story is they can pick the flowers early in the morning and by midnight they've arrived at the flower auctions in Europe. And within 24 hours of picking they are in the British supermarkets. And let's see if we've got the opportunity to investigate further. Here we have a close-up view of a network of polytunnels which are at the moment home to very young flowers which are obviously not big enough to pick. This is a revealing picture. I thought you folks in England would like to see where the workers live that grow and pick your flowers. So Valentine's Day, funerals, birthdays, engagements. This is the living standard of the workers. Breeze block houses, terraced, planned to perfection. Quite crowded, lots of children, donkeys, rubbish bins, washing line, basic television aerial. No travelling expenses to go to work because they just cross the road. And there you have the polytunnels and the man on the motorbike. He's the man I'm paying 500 shillings to convey me as I sit on back of his bicycle, motorbike with my rucksack so I can easily get on and off and photograph the flower industry which makes Kenya famous because it forms millions of pounds of money towards its economy. So Tesco, Waitrose, Morrison's, this is where your flowers come from. These people who live in these conditions and once again in the chain of production there's always people in the rich countries that make the money. Not the workers who live a pretty impoverished this is the interior of a lady flower picker's house. It's one room, but as you can see, it's divided by a curtain, and behind the curtain, you've got some basic cooking utensils and a thin mattress on the floor. There's electricity, there's no television, and it is basic clean and spacious for one person, yeah? yeah? How long have you been living here, please? Just for five years. Five years? And you yeah. pick flowers, do you? Yeah. You're a flower picker? Yeah. And what's your name? My name is Jen. And you live here alone? Five years. How much do you get paid a day for picking flowers? Not much, just uh, 200. 200 shillings a day? Yeah. But this house is free, is it? Work at the company. You get it free with the company? Yeah. There's electricity? No. No electricity? Yeah. But they're, they cut off. Oh, they've cut the electricity off. I saw yeah. the appliances. And you sleep here. Yeah. How many people live in this village? Over 3,000. 3,000 live in this yeah. little village. Yeah. And you work across the road yeah. in the poly tunnel picking flowers. Yeah. Do you know these flowers within 24 hours are in the supermarkets in England? That's how quick they get there. What sort of flowers are they that you pick? I think I cannot talk so much because you have paid me very little money. And you are taking this video to send there. So this is a housing complex across the road from where that lady lived. And I'm taking pictures here because it shows the end of Terrace pr Prospect. And I was in the house across the road photographing the interior, which was difficult to do because any site security man says, you're on company housing property, you've got to get permission. So I wasn't too relaxed inside the house. Once I got all the pictures, I started interviewing her, then she wised up that she could get more money. 
but she's been there for five years. She gets the house free, no electricity, water taps outside, outside shower, and 200 shillings a day. That is about £1.50. Per day for working with flowers and these videos are really designed to show you how humble the workers are who actually provide luxuries in our westernized lifestyle so far I've not attempted to enter one of these flower farms I'm sure if I were around for a few days and I went to head office I might have to wait a while to get permission in the bureaucratic process involved, but I haven't got time and I'm not very patient. And from the photographs I've seen, it looks like the nurseries that you'd see in West Sussex that I visited when I was a student teacher. But here am I showing you this sign. And you've got scores of acres of greenhouses, poly tunnels, hot, humid. A lot of the water will come from the lake of Abasha. What I'm finding, being an amateur travel journalist, quite enjoyable, challenging, somewhat frustrating, especially when you can't always get the material because I'm not backed up by the likes of the BBC. Here's a very good shot of the flower farm complex. There's scores of them. Well, here is a flower farm with the flowers on the outside and no doubt in the polytunnels. I'm lucky to get this picture because if I went inside those polytunnels, which you can see as I zoom in, it's just rows and rows of flowers. Outside. And if I went in there, I'd have to open it open, and the process takes two days. So I've just been told by a security guard, and when I wanted to visit the tea, unlike 12 years ago, I could just walk around. I read in Lonely Planet that, that appointment takes four days. So they don't actually encourage visitors, do they? They just pile on the inconvenience and they know that most travellers don't have the time to hang around. And unless, of course, you're a journalist, you're paid to come here or even live here. Here we have the flowers outside and no doubt inside as well. go inside I'd have to put an appointment and I would need two days to wait and therefore they make it inconvenient for tourists who are passing through and cannot give up all that time but the inside is like what you see now but they'll be underneath the polythene to stimulate growth through hot humid moist conditions of course probably the closest I will get to seeing the interior of the polytunnels. I'm on the main road here and outside the gate of every factory they're saying photography is prohibited. So come for a closer look. I must say, I'm not exactly relaxed taking these pictures because I'm just waiting for a police motorcyclist or a security guard to come to me and 
make me delete. Anyway, I think I've got everything. So I'll be relaxed when I watch these on my Kenya is also well known for supplying Europe with vegetables. Again, they're growing cash crops, which would be an improvement for the diet of many poor Kenyans who cannot afford to eat more than millet and rice. And again, these vegetables will be flown from Nairobi Airport, which is about two hours away from here, and they'll be in the British supermarkets or in European supermarkets within a day, maintaining their freshness. Here we have a well-organized compound. I don't know enough about horticulture to tell you why it is enclosed. But Lake Naivasha is the area where flowers rule the roost, followed by... This video is shot to show you that the vegetables are irrigated. Again, this water would be sewer water, or some of it would be drawn from the lake.